Hey, hey, over here. Bill Nye, speaking to you from Los Angeles. No, it's, it's not really Los Angeles. Los Angeles isn't covered with miles of ice and snow. At least, not now. It was 800 million years ago. But those glaciers have receded. And now Los Angeles is covered with smog and development deals. And the Earth's ice is mostly at the poles, at least for right now. The ice at the poles is melting. Arctic ice melted to a record low in 2002. In Antarctica, ice sheets the size of small states are falling into the sea. The reason? Well, their world, our world, the world, is getting warmer. I mean, is the rise in global temperature a result of the Industrial Revolution, burning fossil fuels and driving everywhere? Or is the rise in temperature just part of the natural ebb and flow of global temperature, and we just happen to find ourselves in the toasty, melty part? Should or even can we do anything about it? Well, yeah, that's the way I see it. To answer the difficult question, is the current rise in global temperature natural or human-made, we have to look back, back in time. And of course, the details of time travel haven't been figured out yet, so we'll work with what we have. You know, after a few of these, I've seen people lose track of time altogether. <laughs> but it's not the juniper-flavored ethanol that we seek. No, no. It's the ice. I've got a 22,000-year-old ice core here for you to look at. This is a piece of ice from Greenland. This is from central Greenland, yeah. Now, what do we learn from this? Well, ice tells you by direct measurement what the composition of the atmosphere was at the time this snow became ice. And how does it do that? And, well, as the snow grains fall, they trap air in between them, and as they become buried with more and more and more snow... They seal the bubbles forever. Absolutely. If you have a bubble in 400,000-year-old ice, you've got a bubble that has 400,000-year-old air in it. You can see bubbles in here, but I have a better way for you to see bubbles on a piece of ice that I've actually cut in this direction out of this core, and I'm going to show it to you right next door. Well, let's, let's go next door. So what have we got here? This is a paper-thin wafer of the ice from that core, and you can see the bubbles in it really, really clearly. Those there. white dots are bubbles. Yep. And what they have in them is a record of the concentration of all of the gases in the atmosphere at the time that snow became ice. So you can determine, for example, how much CO2, how much carbon Absolutely. dioxide was in the That's atmosphere. precisely how that kind of analysis is done, is to analyze the CO2 inside those bubbles. So not only then can you get the um, temperature, but you can also get the composition of the atmosphere all from these... All from the same piece of ice, piece of ice. and a lot more information as well. And you have a, an idea when the last ice age occurred and the one before that, mm -hmm. and, the one before, and you're pretty mm -hmm. sure that they're accurate, right? Oh, yeah. And so oh, yeah. you're also pretty sure the world's getting warmer. Oh, yeah. It's quite a thing to be in this bitterly cold laboratory and realize... It's getting warmer out there, It's getting there, warmer out there. <laughs> They say this is the world's tallest thermometer. It's in Baker, California. It goes up to 139 Fahrenheit, 59 Celsius. Now, times are a-changing. In 30 years, this thermometer may not be big enough. The same thing that keeps the Earth warm enough for us to live here may make the Earth too warm for us to live here. I refer, of course, to the greenhouse effect. The effect is a result of having certain gases in our atmosphere, the greenhouse gases, like methane, chlorofluorocarbons, water vapor, and carbon dioxide. They all trap heat. The energy in sunlight passes right through these gases on the way in, hits the Earth's surface, changes to heat, and then gets trapped by the greenhouse gases on its way back toward outer space. Now, over here in this box, we can add a little extra carbon dioxide to the atmosphere. So turning this valve is like turning on your cars or your fossil fuel power plants, or it's like cutting down forests. Now there's a lot more CO2 in this tank than in this one. Now we have to wait a few minutes. Take a look at the temperatures. The temperature in the tank with extra CO2 in it is just a few degrees higher than the temperature in the box with just regular air. 
Now, a few degrees can be a big deal when you're a planet. The Northwest Passage, a mythic trip from Europe to Asia across the top of the world. Sailors have sought this sea route for centuries, but they were unable to find it because of all the ice. So many died starving and freezing trying to find it. But soon, this navigator's holy grail may become a reality because the Arctic zone is warming faster than anywhere else on Earth. So the ice will melt and it will be possible to get from Europe to Asia without having to go through the Panama Canal. And that would be a savings of 8,000 kilometers. And for the super tankers that are too big to fit through the canal, they won't have to go around Cape Horn, a savings of 25,000 kilometers. So this could be great. We can get oil back and forth up here that much faster and burn it that much quicker and put carbon dioxide into the atmosphere that much sooner. The Northwest Passage. Is this good news or just news? In the coming decades, say the next 100 years, the ocean's level is going to rise because the world is getting warmer. The ice at the North and South Poles will melt, but it's interesting to note that as ice at the Arctic melts, well, that water won't make the ocean's level go up because that ice is floating. It displaces as much water as it weighs. Ice is unique. As water freezes, its molecules slow down, and it doesn't sink. See, when it's a few degrees above freezing, its hydrogen bonds drive its molecules into what's called an open lattice crystal. The molecules spread out. Ice is less dense than liquid water, so it floats. That's why you don't see ice at the bottom of a lake, and icebergs float on the surface of the sea, where ships can run into them. But as ice in glaciers, say in Glacier National Park, and in big ice sheets like in Antarctica melts, well, that water will flow into the sea and make the oceans come up. But a much bigger effect than melting ice is thermal expansion. Expansion of the ocean due to heat. Water is just like anything else. It's made of molecules, and the molecules are always moving. The warmer water is, the faster its molecules move. Faster molecules push each other apart, just like the liquid in a thermometer. Expanding liquid water is going to overrun a lot of icy drinks on warm beaches. You see, as the ocean gets warmer, it's going to expand as much as, say, 50 centimeters. Now, that doesn't sound like much, but 50 centimeters of ocean level rise translates into 50 meters of lost shoreline. If it goes up a meter, we lose 100 meters of shoreline. So that's like, bye-bye, bayous, Seychelles, sayonara. So long, Maldives. Bangladesh, you're going to take another one on the chin. Ciao, Venice. It's been said that the tide waits for no one, and that's true. But soon, the ocean may not wait for whole island nations full of people. And we'll no longer have to go down to the sea because the sea will be coming up to us. You see, it's not just that the world is getting warmer. It's the rapid rate at which it's getting warmer. Many species are not going to have enough time to adapt. Only the versatile ones are going to survive, like, like cockroaches. Already, we're seeing migrations of animals away from the equator toward the poles, where it's cooler. Africa, it's hot and the desert is moving toward us. You know how we know? The well, springbok. They're animals that are moving south to get away from the heat. It's global climate change, my friends. It's happening everywhere. I know what you're saying. You're saying, hey, Bill, Nye, Mr. Science Guy, the world's getting warmer, so what? I mean, the CO2 is already in the air. The world is warming, our goose is cooking, the horse is out of the barn. What's to be done about it? What could I possibly do about global warming? The strange thing about global climate change is that every single thing each and every one of us does affects everybody all over the world because you see, it's one global ecosystem. Okay, there's no getting out, not for any of us. So I'll tell you what, Use less energy, drive less, maybe drive less inefficient cars, 
turn out the lights. You could, with every one of your decisions, dare I say it, change the world. I hope you'll think about it. And I'll see you next time on The Eyes of Nine.